One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. Mike Heading here. I've got an intermediate backup lesson for you today. A while back I did a beginner version of this lesson, down the neck, rolling back up in the key of G, and I had a request to do an intermediate version, so make the licks a little bit more advanced, make the timing a little bit more advanced, and that's what I did for this lesson. We got two times through the backup progression, and I'm going to break it down note for note. All right, here's down the neck, rolling back up in the key of G. And if you're watching the preview of this lesson, you can head over to my website, mikeheadingmusic.com, and grab the full-length lesson. You'll get access to all the videos, and you can download the tabs and the practice tracks. All right, here's down the neck, rolling back up in the key of G. All right, let's start breaking down this intermediate down the neck, rolling back up. So let me play the first four measures, and we'll start breaking it down. Here we go. Do that a few times. One more time, real slow. Okay, so we're going to start, remember this is our basic bluegrass chord progression. So we're doing a G, C, G, D progression, and we're just going to do some intermediate down the neck rolling back up. So I'll give you some variations. I'll break down the whole solo note for note, but also give you some variations. So we're going to start with a pinch on the third string and first string with our index and middle finger. And that's beat one. Remember, there's no pickup since we're just playing back up. And then we're going to go up and do five, three, one, two, four rolls, T-I-M. So we have... And you can't loop it because it starts and ends with your middle finger, but... So I really like that pinch to start, it really pops out the first set of notes. Another way you could do it is if you wanted a couple variations though, is one, you could do it with your thumb instead if you didn't want to do the pinch. The other way you could do it is with like a 2-5 slide or a 3-5 slide if you wanted a little bluesier. So you do the initial pinch, and then instead of doing 5-3-1, you'd do 4-3-1 with the slide. And then you do 5-3-1, so you'd have... So you have a couple options there. I, I really like using the forward roll to start. Again, it keeps that forward momentum. It keeps that drive going. So I really like to start with the forward roll. And whether you do a slide or not is kind of inconsequential. So just try, try it a couple different ways. Then measure two, we're going to do a, basically a G7 lick that's going to set up our C chord. So we're going to do put our second finger on the third fret of the fourth string and do index, thumb, index, third string, fourth string, third string and then open first string. So not really a Scruggs roll there, almost more like a melodic style roll. And then we're gonna do a two, three hammer on on the third string with a forward roll. So we did three, two, one, five there were my string. So we have, that one you could loop if you wanted to. that roll it, it just has a cool feel to it you get that cool timing and then you're rolling into your C chord you can also practice getting up to that first fret on the second string that's our target note to get to for measure three so we have do that a little faster so a couple variations one you could do it with a slide instead of a hammer on right here so slides and hammer-ons are pretty much interchangeable. The other thing you can do is, is change up that initial roll. You can also do that like an alternating thumb roll. So just playing with the timing there. There I did four, three, five, one. But I would try it both ways. So you have... 
One more time, a little faster. Okay, so we're getting up to that first fret on the second string for measure three. Then we're gonna do like a little lick. So that's just a, a little lick I like to do on a C chord. Again, we're kind of playing with that idea of adding a finger and then taking a finger off to basically, we're playing over a C chord, but we're adding our pinky up on that third fret on the highest string. So we're kind of playing with that sound of taking that note on and off. So we're hitting the first fret on the second string with your index finger of your right hand. Then you go up and do five, two, one, a forward roll, T-I-M. And then do that same roll, but put your pinky on. And then for measure four, take your pinky off, do a forward verse roll on that C chord. So not too hard, we have. Let's do that a few times. pretty much keep that lick as written for this this arrangement you could just as a practice you could practice adding that that third fret at different times so you could maybe add it at the beginning you know you're basically just practicing keeping your right hand moving you're just practicing adding that finger without without your right hand hopefully getting thrown off. Another one you can do is that same idea, but you're gonna take on and off your third finger. So you have. So that'd be like another lick you could do right there. Instead of adding that third fret, you could take off your third finger and do open. Basically there, we just want a little melodic movement on the top string. So just play with that idea, you know, you can do the lick as written. Or again, just as a practice exercise, just practice taking on and off those different fingers. Try and keep your right hand exactly the same there, that'd be good practice. So let's do the first four measures, here we go. A couple more times. One more, a little faster. This is also a great lesson to practice accenting different fingers of your right hand. So when I do that lick in measure three and four, I'm really accenting my middle finger of my right hand there. Hear that? So you, you really hear that higher note pop out. So that's what I want you to practice there is, it's not, you know, if you accent your thumb on the fifth string, for example, you kind of lose the sound of that lick. So also, what's cool about accenting your, your middle finger there is you get some cool syncopation. So you have one, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three. So that, that high string, is, is very syncopated because we're doing a forward roll. So you'll see that first string is playing on the downbeat on beat three, then it's on the and of beat four, then back to the, the two. So you get that cool syncopation. One, two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four. So it's that on beat, off beat, on beat kind of syncopation thing that's really cool about banjo. So let's do that one more time, here we go. Measure five, you stay in this position. Your, your second finger is down on the second fret of the lowest string, and we're gonna slide from two to five while doing a forward roll. So four, three, one, and then go up and do five, three, one, three times. Now we have four more notes, so let's do an alternating thumb roll, T I T M. We're gonna do third fret on the lowest string, open third string and then second fret on the lowest string, and then open first string. So that's a good two measure forward roll pattern. So we have four forward rolls, which gives us 12 notes, and we have 16 notes total in two measures. So eight eighth notes per measure. So 16 eighth notes total. So four forward rolls would be 12 eighth notes, and then we need four more eighth notes. So the alternating thumb roll works great, T-I-T-M. So that's a great two measure forward roll pattern. So we have
you could loop that if you wanted to. And I'd recommend using your second and first finger there. But you could use your second finger and play them both, or your first finger. You know, that's 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 kind of a small difference there. But what I practice there is feeling how long two measures is. That's a great two measure forward roll pattern. The other thing you could practice is starting it the same way. And then for those last four notes, change it up. Maybe do open. So you can mess with those last four notes to get a bunch of different sounds. So that's a two measure forward roll pattern I'll use all the time. Now we're gonna lead down into, so we're walking that third fret and second fret down on the lowest string, which is gonna set us up to get to our open four string, which is a D chord. So we have. So that's why we're kind of walking that down. Hear that? And then measure seven and eight, so two measure D lick. Let me play it and then I'll break it down. So this is straight from the Earl Scruggs or J.D. Crow library. This is a two measure D lick that I, I've heard J.D. Crow use a lot. Earl Scruggs would use this type of lick as well. It's working out of this D chord, your, your four finger D chord. We're gonna hit the open four string and then do middle index. So first string, second string, and then we're gonna do thumb index on the third string. Bring your third finger down to the fourth fret of the third string and do thumb index. So fourth fret, second fret. So we have One's a quarter note, so that gives you time to get your 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 uh, chord down. So you have use that open four string. That's going to help you get the chord down. And then right here, we're going to break a little Scruggs rule and use our thumb twice in a row. You're going to move your third finger back to the fourth fret of the four string, and I'm going to push my thumb through strings four and three. And then I'm gonna hit the third fret on the second string to start measure eight. So that takes a little bit of practice and it's just, a, you know, it's kind of just reworking your rules that you've, you're kind of breaking a Scruggs rule there of using the same finger twice in a row. So let's practice that a few times. And you have to, you can't push your thumb too fast. So you just have to get the timing of it. One, basically going to walk those notes back down for the rest of measure eight. Put your third finger back on the, the fourth fret of the, the third string for a quarter note. Then take your third finger off, do thumb index, third string, second string, and then move your third finger back to the fourth fret of the fourth string. So you, measure eight sounds like this. of variations on that, that, that lick. Basically what you want to hear is, so you could mess with the timing of it or try mi mixing up the roll or adding hammer-ons or pull off you might do. You know, there's lots of variations on that lick using different right hands, but it's basically kind of the essence of the lick stays the same. You might also hear it as pinches. Also hear that on a C chord. So that's a very common Scrug style lick, or JD Crow would use that a lot. Let's do five through eight. Here we go. A couple more times. 